I've got some great tips for you today. Welcome in, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything beauty, fitness, and lifestyle for the over 50 and over 60 woman. I'm glad you stopped by today. I've got so many good tips to share with you. If you're new here, I'm so glad you stopped by. I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. And if you want all the good stuff, you might want to sign up for my Sunday morning email newsletter. The people that get the email newsletter know how good it is. Every Sunday morning, I send out a very short, very sweet email newsletter. It goes right to your inbox and I talk about all the cool things I found throughout the week whether it's a great sale or a good buy or something I found that was really worth it a good piece of information whatever I find during the week that I think oh my girlfriend should know about that's what goes in the Sunday morning email newsletter it's super easy it's super free it's super fun just click the link in the description box down below it'll take you right to the little sign up sheet it will come into your inbox next Sunday morning I think you're gonna love it as most of you know I started on my anti-aging skincare routine about four years ago. And you know what? The reason I did is because my skin was so terrible. I had never taken care of my skin my entire life. Truly, my skin looked terrible. I was in my early 60s. I think I was 62. I'm 64 now. And I decided I would take it on as a project. I love a good project. I knew nothing about skincare. Absolutely nothing about skincare. So I had to learn everything from the get-go. What I'm going to share with you today are all the little tips and tricks that have made it so much easier for me that I thought you might find helpful. One of my pet peeves in life is those mundane little daily tasks that are either annoying or they take too long or they're aggravating or they're stupid or they're dumb or whatever. I spend a great amount of time, like when I'm driving or just thinking, figuring out how I can make those daily tasks that aren't exciting a little bit easier, quicker, and more effective and fun. That's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. It's all about skincare and all about how to keep your routine effective, easy, so that you'll keep doing it. One thing I want to tell you before we get started is I am not a skincare professional. Absolutely. I have absolutely no training in skincare. I'm not an esthetician. I'm not a dermatologist. Nothing. Everything I'm going to be sharing today is just what I have learned along the way, and it's all my opinion. So if I state something like it's fact, it's not. It's just my opinion. So with that, let me go ahead and jump in. Well, I've got 10, actually 11 tips for you today. And if I have a video that contains greater, broader, deeper information on the topic, I'll shout it out because today I'm just going to be going through the list. If there's any more good information that I think would be relevant, I'll go ahead and have it linked in the description box down below and then you can go over there and find out more about that topic. The first tip I want to share, it's a really good one. They're all really good. <laughs> and this doesn't make any difference whether you're just starting your skincare routine or if you've been at it for your entire lifetime. Take pictures. I'm not kidding you. Take pictures and not just still shots. Take video of your face as well with you talking. Take it from the side. Talk. You want to be able to see through those pictures how your skin is moving on your face and how your skin looks. I try to take pictures well all the time clearly because I'm on <laughs> YouTube so I have lots and lots of pictures. But for you I would recommend that you take pictures at least every six months. Better every three months because it's really really going to inform you about what's working and what isn't working. The thing with skincare is that the changes are so incremental. They're tiny, tiny little changes and it's not the type of thing where you wake up one morning and oh my gosh, my skin looks so much different. It's not that. It is a gradual, subtle little change over time. And it's happened to me where I don't realize how much better a particular issue is looking because I don't really remember or it's so subtle over the months and years. But when I look back at the pictures, it really makes me aware of how powerful a good skincare routine can be. So take pictures. If you've been doing great skincare all your life, still take pictures because you want to be able to document what's going on with your face. If you're brand new to skincare, absolutely take pictures because you're going to be shocked and stunned at how different your face looks, your skin looks in three months, six months, and a year. So number one, on the list, absolutely take pictures. Number two is for those of you who are fairly new to skincare and you're just starting in, and if you were anything like me, 
it's confusing. <laughs> and I think they make it confusing on purpose. I really recommend that you start super, super simple. I wish I would have done that. What I did when I first started is I went out and bought a whole bunch of stuff, spent a whole lot of money and started slathering it on my face. And that's absolutely not the way to do it. The reason is, is that usually when a good skincare routine is not on board, our skin is so thick and ruddy and covered in old dead skin cells that all those potions and lotions that I bought to slather on my face couldn't get absorbed anyway. What I really needed to do was to spend the first six to eight weeks just washing my face, moisturizing my face, using a good exfoliant two or three times a week. The reason I say this is because I had so much dead skin buildup on my face that I'm sure everything I put on it for the first couple months just slid right off or got washed off in the morning, didn't get absorbed because my skin was so just overrun with things that needed to come off my face. So I would really recommend that you simply wash your face, moisturize your face, use a good exfoliant two to three times a week. And the one that I recommend, this is what I use. I still use it today. It's the AHA BHA solution from The Ordinary. This is so affordable. It's under $10. I've had this bottle, gosh, for probably five or six months. It really is very powerful at exfoliating your skin. And when it says AHA BHA peel, it doesn't peel anything off. It, you won't see anything peel off your skin. It really just does start getting those old dead skin cells to slough away. It is a little strong. So if you have sensitive skin, you might want to do just a little patch test first before you use it. I love this stuff. This two to three times a week when you're first starting out, wash your face, moisturize your face, use this a couple three times a week, and you'll be surprised at how much brighter and fresher your skin looks after six weeks. And then you can start jumping into a more comprehensive skincare routine. All right, so now that you've started your skincare routine by just starting slow, getting in the habit, it. And I like that because you're going to find out if you're going to stick with it. Why buy a whole bunch of stuff if you end up saying, this is just not for me. I don't want to do this. So that first four to six weeks of just moisturizing your skin and keeping it clean, exfoliating a couple times a week is really going to show you if you're going to stick with it. So if you decide you're going to move forward into the skincare routine, what I recommend is a super simple routine in the beginning, because you know what? <laughs> If you're anything like me, you don't know anything about skincare. So keeping it super simple in the beginning is going to be A, much more affordable, B, very effective, and C, you're going to start getting familiar with the different skincare products in a very, very small and simple way. And there you can take that information and start expanding on your routine down the road. In the beginning, keep it super simple. I recommend vitamin A, vitamin B, and vitamin C. Super easy to remember. Then just keep your face washed and moisturized and still use your exfoliant a couple times a week. Now, I have done a full video on how to start a basic skincare routine. I'll have it listed in the description box down below. But when you're very first starting, I really recommend that you just start with the things that are going to make the biggest difference in your skin. So you want to brighten your skin, you want to tighten your skin, you want to nourish your skin, and then you want to moisturize your skin. So that is a very, very simple, easy way with vitamin A, vitamin B, and vitamin C to get started on a skincare routine. It's going to be super affordable, very effective, and you're going to be surprised when you look at the pictures that you took at the very beginning, then you took more pictures when you started with your new skincare routine. You're going to be surprised in the first six months how different your skin Skin looks. So definitely tip number three is to start very, very simple with an easy ABC routine. Next up is how to keep it easy to do in the morning. And if you're like me, you have got reading glasses in every room of the house, in every drawer of the house, and yet I still end up in a situation where I don't have my glasses with me. It gets very frustrating when I'm in the bathroom in the morning, I realize I don't have my glasses and I want to do my skincare routine and I can't read the the bottles because these bottles, the writing is so very tiny. What I have done is I keep my skincare in a bucket 
all lined up. So I start at this end and I work my way down all the way to the other end. No glasses needed. This has been such a handy trick for me. I still use it today. I have an AM bucket and a PM bucket. I just line everything up and I go down the line, put my moisturizer on and I'm good for the day. No glasses required. This is very, very handy. Do you need a bucket? Absolutely not. You could line them up in your medicine cabinet or another thing that you could do is take a Sharpie and write a letter on that bottle. Let's say if it's vitamin C, just write a big C on the bottle and you'll know which one it is. You don't have to read the tiny, tiny writing. Getting your serums all lined up in a way that's going to make it really easy to get done makes it so much better because when I'm doing my skincare, I'm usually thinking about something entirely different than skincare. I'm just going through the motions and getting this on my face. This makes it so much easier to do. You'll find it's a lot quicker and you won't skip it as often because it's so quick and so very easy. Another thing that you can do if it's helpful for you is that you can write the date on the bottle of when you first opened it. That's a good way to find out how how to budget for your skincare routine because you can see how long each bottle lasts. So you can actually put a lot of information on these bottles when you get them, a big letter for a vitamin A or vitamin B or vitamin C, and then the date that you purchase them. So when you go through it, you'll know exactly how often you need to order that product. And maybe the company that you're using has a big sale. So you know that you can order two or three that's going to carry you through the next six, eight months. The next time they have a sale, you can purchase again. Another tip that is so easy and so affordable because it's free is to make sure that your skin is damp before you start applying your serums. What that is going to do is it already has your skin primed for moisture and it's going to help those serums absorb much more easily and much quicker. We've all had that experience where we put something on our skin and we kind of felt like it just slid right off. It didn't actually absorb into our skin. If you start with moist skin, in other words, you've already rinsed or washed your face. When you go to pat it dry, don't pat it all the way dry. Just get the major moisture off your skin. Make sure your skin is very moist. After the shower is really nice because your skin has had the time to absorb all the steam and the moisture from the shower. There's a lot of moisture in your skin then and then you get out, barely pat your face dry and start applying your serums. You're going to find that the absorption is just so much better. The next tip was one that I came up with because this thing was driving me absolutely nuts. And maybe you've had this experience. You're washing your face in the sink and the water is dripping down your arms into your pajamas or your robe. It used to drive me absolutely crazy. Honestly, I would dread washing my face because of that water running down my arm. It was so annoying. My jammies would get wet. <laughs> I didn't like it one bit. So I thought, what can I do to make sure that that water doesn't drip down my arms? Well, the answer is wristbands. <laughs> These are so handy and once you start using them, you will never go back. So if you want to get your face damp, you don't want the water dripping down your arms into your pajamas or your room, just get some wristbands. These fit right around your wrist. It stops the water from dripping down your arms. It's super easy. It takes less than a second to put them on. It takes less than a second to get them off again. And you know what? Do you have to buy wristbands off of Amazon or something else? No. Just go to the dollar store, buy a pair of long tube socks, and just cut the top of those socks off. You could probably get, oh, three or four out of each sock. So then you have three or four pairs of bands to put around your wrist. That's how I started. I had the tops of socks on my wrist for probably the first two years that I was doing my skincare routine. And then somebody sent me some. And so this is what I use now. So definitely you don't need to spend a lot of money on wristbands. But once you put those bands around your wrist, you'll never wash your face without them again, because it's so nice not to have that water dripping down your arm and making everything that you don't want wet. The next tip I want to give you is don't buy it. <laughs> I'm not kidding you don't buy it. And what I mean by that is I have people messaging me, emailing me, commenting all the time saying, I just bought this. When should I put it in my skincare routine? And I'm like, 
If you don't know where to put it in your routine, or if you don't know how to use it, you're not ready to buy it. Here's what happens out there in the skincare world, because companies have realized there is such a market for skincare. And remember back in our teens, there was nothing out there. There was Noxema and Clarisel. I can remember a doctor that I went to for acne told me to wash my face with Dial soap. That was as sophisticated as skincare was when we were younger. We really didn't have good skincare. Today, there are hundreds of companies out there. There are lots and lots of great companies out there, and all of them are putting together formulas that they promise you are going to do miraculous things for your skin. Will they? Well, I don't know. A lot of them do, but maybe not all of them. And you know, I had a funny comment from a viewer the other day. She said, wait a minute, you just got through talking about the Go Pure niacinamide, but then you talked about the ordinary niacinamide a few weeks ago. I'm confused. Which one do you like? I like both of them. <laughs> There are a lot of good companies out there that do great products. So being able to find a company that you like their product line, you like their price point, and you like what they have to offer is so much easier now because there are so many more choices. The thing is, is that they are going to be coming up with formulations that you may not understand yet in your skincare routine. What I suggest is that you just start really, really slow. Again, vitamin A, vitamin B, and vitamin C. Then start doing a little bit more research. If you have specific issues, start looking about videos about that specific issue, see what that person is using, research over here, research over there. And what's going to happen over time is you're going to become more familiar with the formulations and the ingredients that are going to address the issues that you're looking to work on. And so as your understanding of skincare grows and develops, you'll be able to buy buy a product with confidence, know exactly when you're going to use it, whether AM or PM, where in your routine you're going to put it, and what it is that you are hoping that that is going to address with your skincare needs. Buying something just because someone else is using it, or because you saw something with some claims that may be true, maybe they're not, we don't know yet, you haven't bought it yet and tried it. Just buying something because it looks sparkly and shiny is not really going to benefit your skincare routine because if you don't understand what it is you're hoping it's going to do for you, if you're not going to be able to track the progress on it, and if you don't know where to put it into your skincare routine, I would say you're not ready to buy it. So make sure that as you build out your skincare routine beyond the vitamin A, vitamin B, and vitamin C, that you really understand what the next product is that you want to bring on board. If you're the least bit confused about where to put it in your routine, if you're not really clear on what you hope it's going to do for you, if you don't really understand what the ingredient is and how the ingredient interacts with your skin, I would say don't buy it. You're not quite ready. The next tip is to make sure before you use your devices, whether it's a microcurrent, whether it's a radio frequency device, whether it's an at-home laser device, any device that you're going to be using, make sure that you have the oil off your face. That's why it's very, very good practice to actually wash your face before you use any of your devices. Because often, if you have oil on your skin from a moisturizer, from the night before or even the oil from your own skin, it can at times impede the functionality of that device. So if you're using radio frequency, if you're using microcurrent, if you're using laser, make sure that your skin is as clean as possible so that you can get the very best benefit from using that device. I know that devices are a time commitment. They are. I've been using devices, gosh, for close to four years now, and it is something that I need to sit down and put my time into. I try to listen to something or have a video going that is something relevant that I want to learn or understand. I try to do something while I'm doing my devices because Lord knows <laughs> it can get a little bit boring or I feel like it's just taking too much time. So I like to make sure that I'm doing something while I'm doing my devices. In addition, I like to make sure that my skin is really, really clean. So whatever I'm doing, whichever device I'm using, I'm getting the absolute best benefit from it. 
The next thing is maybe it's a personal issue for me. Maybe you have this too, <laughs> but I am tired at the end of the day. I really am pooped at the end of the day. My days are so full that by time it gets to be seven, eight o'clock, I am gigantic just whooped. And so many times I have been caught in a position where I just don't want to do my evening skincare because I'm just too doggone tired. What I have learned to do is on those days where I know I'm not going out anymore in the evening or into the evening time, I am going to do my skincare early. And maybe that's four or five o'clock at night, do my evening skincare routine. Because I know myself, I know I'm going to get lazy and I'm not not going to want to go in there and do it. So I try to do mine as early as possible. Maybe this is helpful for you too. I know that I almost always do my morning skincare routine. It's very, very rare that I miss it, but my evening skincare routine can get a little bit dicey because of that tiredness factor. So on the days that I think things are going to get a little... <laughs> dicey past seven o'clock you know i'm in bed by nine nine thirty i will try to do my skincare routine really really early now here's another tip if you feel like you just can't get it done that you just have no desire to go in there and start slathering stuff on your face try to at least moisturize your face oft times a lot of the signs of aging that we have in our skin is just a lack of moisture so if you can at least get some moisture on your skin before you go to bed, it's going to make a world of difference to how your skin looks the next morning. It's also going to help your morning skincare absorb into your skin easier because you have that moisture that's been absorbed into your skin from the night before. So if you need to keep the moisturizer on your bedside table so that once you get into bed, you can just slather it on really quickly, that could be a good solution. I try to at least get some moisturizer on my skin because I know that there's a huge difference when I just go to bed with nothing on my skin, just the skincare that I had done earlier in the day. And if I at least put moisturizer on my skin, my skin looks so much better the next morning because it's got that moisture deep into my tissues. The last tip is one that I can say is so very important and it's so very obvious. That is with skincare, you don't have to do it perfect. You don't have to do it great every day. You don't have to do your devices on schedule every single week. The only thing you need to do is just be consistent. Just keep going. If you miss a day, no big deal. If you miss doing your evening skincare because you were too tired, no big deal. Just do it the next night. It's the consistency over time that I know has been so very important to me. My skin looks so much better than it did four years ago. It's really night and day. And I've had a lot of people say, it's amazing to see the transformation that you haven't had any surgeries. I don't do Botox. I don't do fillers, whatever, what, I don't know, anything, everything that I've done is at home. I haven't had a facelift. I haven't had anything. I think that there is a pervasive thought process or kind of a understanding that you really can't do much with your skin without going and having medical intervention. I think that this channel has proved that that's not true. You really can do so very much with just at home products and devices. I have seen a tremendous change in my skin. Have I been perfect all the time? Absolutely not. I go to bed with nothing on my face just like you do. I don't do my devices some weeks as much as I wish I had. I just have stayed consistent over the years and it turns into the type of thing where your skin has so much nourishment that it's been treated so well that it really, really does look brighter and tighter and firmer and just a whole lot smoother. So be consistent. You guys know that's the answer to most things and you're going to be surprised if you're just starting on your skincare routine a year from now when you look back at your pictures from before you started to the first three months to the first six months to the first nine months and then you look at the pictures from the 12 months you're going to be amazed because you're probably going to look younger than you did a year ago. Well those 
those are my top 10, actually I think it was 11, <laughs> skincare tips that I have learned over the past four years of doing skincare on my own at home. And I am not kidding you, you guys, I knew nothing about skincare. So if you're coming into this feeling overwhelmed or not really feeling like you know what's going on, it's okay. It is actually much, much easier than you would think to put together a very effective, very affordable anti-aging skincare routine that's going to have your skin looking so much better, brighter, tighter, and fresher. After just a few months, you're going to be so surprised. I want to thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this fun, useful, and helpful. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything beauty, fitness, and lifestyle for the over 50 and over 60 woman. Make it a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.